Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is Dustin Avey and I serve as the chair of the Olathe Chamber of Commerce Business to Government Advocacy Committee. And it's my honor to moderate today's forum. Uh, the Johnson County Public Policy Council, comprised of 10 chambers of commerce serving Johnson County, developed today's questions focusing on business and community issues. We will start with a brief three minutes opening statements by each candidate, followed by a question and answer, where candidates will have one and a half minutes to answer the question. At the conclusion of the forum, each candidate will have two minutes to make a closing statement. Due to time constraints, there will be no follow-up questions, formal rebuttal time, or audience participation. Please note, candidate speaking order has been randomly determined before the forum began and will rotate throughout the program. I'd like to introduce um, today's forum participants for House District um, 121. Um, first, House District 121 is bordered to the north by K-10 and 159th to the south, K-7 to the east, and county line to the west. Now I'd like to introduce the candidates in alphabetical order. First, Democrat candidate Mel P P Pinnock. Mel grew up in an Air Force family and traveled the world from England and Germany to Florida and Arizona. She picked Kansas as her home when she moved to Olathe in 2006. Her passion for advocacy began at work shortly after the birth of her son Oliver and frustration her company had no PTO. She raised awareness with her, with her and provided compassionate support to other mothers and others going through hardship company policies um, did not consider. She is a founding member of one of the associate impact groups and helped her company implement new benefits including 12 weeks paid leave for all parents regardless of how they became parents. The feeling of helping making, make things a little better for the next generation of parents that turned into an advocate for other people. Next is Republican candidate John Ressman. John attended William Patterson University in Wayne, New Jersey. In 1976, he volunteered for military service in the U.S. Army and was stationed at the United States Disciplinary Barracks in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas as a military policeman and correctional specialist while attending Park University. Following active military service, he joined the Kansas National Guard and became a correctional officer with the Federal Bureau of Prisons at the U.S. Penitentiary in Leavenworth and two years later transferred to the Federal Corrections Institution in Otisville, New York. In 1982, he began his long career in law enforcement, including working in the Johnson County Sheriff's Office, serving as a member of the Kansas City Metropolitan Major Case Squad, and supervisor for the nearly newly formed Johnson County Multi-Jurisdictional Officer Involved Shooting Team. As a member of the Metro Squad, he has investigated and supervised numerous homicide investigations in both Kansas and Missouri. John also served on the Sheriff's um, Sheriff's Office Honor Guard. John retired in 2010. Since retirement, he has served on the Johnson County Charter Commission, participated in the Meals on Wheels program, and worked part-time for Johnson County Park and Recreation District. John has been married to his wife, Elizabeth, for 41 years. We will now begin with opening statements by each candidate. Um, each candidate will get three minutes for opening statements, and Mel, we will start with you. Thank you. Thank you for the, to the chamber and the committee for and everyone involved in putting this together. I'm a Kansan by choice. I moved here with my family when my father was in the Air Force and he retired and we chose to stay here. I love the history of Kansas as the free state and the Kansas values of education, integrity, and hard work and liberty. And I'm proud to be raising my family here. Five years ago, my son Oliver was born. I loved my job, but their lack of maternity leave was a huge burden to my family. After taking two months unpaid time off, I, when I came back, I went to work to change that. And while it didn't happen quick enough for me to benefit when my daughter Maya was born, I helped make things better for the next generation of parents. Now I'm running for our state legislature to make things better for my neighbors in House District 121, the community, and all Kansans. I want to help people who are hurting with the rising costs of living. I want all people to have access to the health care that they need to be safe and healthy. And I want to support our quality public education by ensuring they have the resources they need and are not hindered by government overreach. 
Her state is suffering from a workforce shortage that is impacting all industries. I will stand up to any extremist measures that limit our rights to privacy, bodily autonomy, or anything else that drives residents out of Kansas and prevents smart, talented workers from moving here. Most of all, I want to represent the values and needs of House District 121 above any party ideology or special interest. Thank you, Bill. John? Thank you. I also want to thank the Lake the Chamber for hosting this uh, forum today. And unfortunately, you're probably going to hear a repeat of Dustin's intro. Um, in 1976, I arrived at Fort Leavenworth and stationed there for three years where I met my wife. We've been married for 44 years now. Um, uh, after serving in the military, I uh, joined the Kansas National Guard and I went to work at the Federal Bureau of Prisons at, at Leavenworth. And after three and a half years, I left the Bureau of Prisons and um, went to work for the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. And as you heard, um, I was a member of the Metro Squad, often involved shooting team and worked numerous homicides, uh, both in Kansas and Missouri. Uh, one of the things he did mention was that I did coach baseball and in soccer when my, uh, when my son was younger. And um, we also had a daughter who passed away uh, at the age of 30. She was a special needs child and unfortunately uh, passed away in 2003. Um, in 2017, I was appointed to the legislature when Representative Mike Keegan stepped down for health reasons, and I've been reelected twice. Uh, I currently serve on federal and state affairs, corrections and juvenile justice, and vice chair for transportation and public safety budget, and I also serve on the corrections and juvenile justice interim committee. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you both for your introductory statements. Um, we appreciate that. Now we're going to move into the question and answer um, part of the forum. Again, candidates will be given one and a half minutes each to respond. Um, again, the speaking order will rotate between uh, with each question. So, John, we'll start with you on question number one. Um, what are your views on state tax policy, being as specific as you can? As you know, Kansas ranks pretty high when it comes to income tax, corporate tax, and uh, sales tax. In, starting in 2023, sales tax will begin to come down at 2.5% the first year and then 2% every year after that. But I think we need to kind of accelerate that. Uh, I think the budget right now can probably handle that, but I'm not quite sure in the future. One of the things that we've done in, in the legislature is that um, we passed a bill that prohibits the increase of appraised value of real property have normal repairs. So if you repair the uh, your roof, um, your appraisal will not change on the home, so therefore your property taxes won't go up. It's just a normal maintenance of your home. We have over, well over a billion dollars in tax exemptions. Uh, every year, um, there's, there's a, um, we, we try to eliminate some of those, but unfortunately the list just gets longer and longer, and if we could eliminate some of those tax exemptions, we probably could balance our budget a lot easier. We also passed a, a, the tax transparency bill in which if you're going to um, raise taxes locally or, or at the county level, you have to hold hearings so the public has some understanding that the taxes could be raised in, in the near future. And that's about it. Thank you, John. Uh, Mel, over to you. Thank you. I believe that Kansans have paid more than their fair share in the last four years to make up for the ter terrible consequences of Brownback's policies. It's time, it's more than time to give that money back to the people. We should eliminate the food sales tax immediately, not in 2025. We should fund the local ad valorem tax reduction fund. We should reduce the property tax assessment rate and eliminate tax on sale on social security just to keep it short i want to do everything we can to lower taxes for working and retired people there's just really no excuse not to thank you both for your responses to question number one um moving to question number two and something that's um obviously been a topic of discussion in the legislature the last several years regarding education. Um, I'll start with you on, on this question number two. What are your views on K-12 education funding and accessibility? Thank you. 
Education is one of the biggest factors in economic growth. Currently, our schools are in crisis, which will turn, in turn affect our state economy. We need to fully fund schools, including special education, and develop programs to attract and retain skilled, certified education professionals. We also need to show our support and trust in these professionals by giving them the tools that they need to ensure our children succeed. This includes not placing undue burdens on teachers that hinder their ability to educate the future leaders of Kansas. Thank you, John. Kansas is fully funding schools for 2023. Uh, in 2019, the legislature passed a bill that, and a plan to fully fund schools uh, that was also that was approved by the Supreme Court. If we adhere to this plan uh, in the future, um, we will fully fund schools for, 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 for the future. I have, uh, I've, also, I've voted for fully funding schools every time, and I also voted for the amendment on special education as a result of our daughter and her, uh, and her needs, uh, special needs that she's had. One of the things for accessibility that we've done in the legislature is that we've uh, directed school districts to develop plans and guidelines laying out their capacity for each grade. This would allow students from other districts to transfer in should there be an opening and, and school districts can set the priorities and the, the reasons for transfer and they should be able to give students an opportunity to, to advance and give every, every child a chance to, uh, to do the best that they can in school. Thank you both for your response to that question. Moving on to question number three, and it's something we've seen a lot of in Johnson County in, in the last uh, few months um, on the economic development side of things. I think this is an important topic to probably all chambers in the county. Um, John, we'll start with you on this question. Um, what types of economic development policies do you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? Kansas is, is in competition with 49 other states to bring business to, to Kansas. Um, during the past session, uh, we passed and I voted for the Apex Bill, which will bring our first major corporation to, to, uh, to Kansas. Um, this will also be followed by supply chain that will supply this new plant coming into, into Johnson County, and actually we'll be moving into District 121. This Apex plan will also uh, allow uh, companies to be competitive in, in, in coming to Johnson County. We've also supported uh, aviation industry tax credits to keep uh, aviation in Wichita, which for a long time, um, the state of Oklahoma has been trying to lure aviation back into their, into their state. It's programs like that, I think, that will help, uh, help grow Kansas. Thank you, John. Bill? No? I appreciate the focus that Laura Kelly has had on attracting big companies to come to Kansas. The, the Apex bill John was just talking about, but not to the, to the detriment of our rural areas. Most of the people in the rural areas of our dis, of my district want to live in the country. That's DeSoto, Eudora, Lexington Township. They don't want a huge corporation to move in and change the landscape. The best way to drive economic growth and maintain the beauty of our rural areas is to invest in agriculture, wind, and solar energy. And if the legislature can finally pass a marijuana bill, we should invest in helping Kansas farmers who want to farm cannabis do so. Thank you both for your response to question number three. On a similar matter um, related to economic development as a workforce issue, uh, Mel, we'll start with you on this question. Um, what would you do to grow and develop the state's workforce? Our workforce issues are the, are the direct result of the hugely unpopular policy of our extremist legislature. We are competing with 49 other states for workers, and in a time where people are moving away from big cities like LA and New York, why aren't they moving here? 
because our legislature is trying to take away our health care options for women in dangerous situations. We don't have the safety net of expanded Medicaid, no medical marijuana for cancer patients or those with chronic pain. Children with intellectual and developmental disabilities are waiting over 10 years for services. And our schools are facing a tidal wave of teachers and staff leaving the profession due to the lack of funding and the hostile bills aimed at them. We want to grow and develop the workforce, so we need to make Kansas a place people want to move to instead of from. Thank you, Bill. John? Thank you. Um, we must uh, create new ways to keep uh, college graduates in Kansas. 62% uh, of college graduates leave the state of Kansas and um, as we talked earlier about my son, he's one of them. He's, he's left the state of Kansas. Education plays an important part in the workforce development. High schools, once again, are offering education and skills in the trades, which for years has gone uh, by the wayside. Uh, we've developed such programs as work-based work learning programs that will allow high school students to go on the job training, job sh shadowing, in internships will quickly increase our, our workforce. Another program that the legislature passed was to allow service members and their spouses to complete the application to shorten their regulatory requirements for jobs. Many of the military uh, personnel are already qualified in a, in a large, large range of fields, and we should be able to allow them to expedite their, their regulatory obligations to, uh, to get into the workforce in Kansas as soon as possible. Thank you both for your responses to question number four. Um, maybe shifting gears and going back to an education question real quick, and John, we'll start with you on this particular question. Um, what are your views on the state's role with respect to ensuring access and affordability of post-secondary education? As I stated earlier, not, um, we, we are beginning to look at the trades as an option for, for college. Uh, Kansas offers a large variety of grants and scholarships that uh, every student should take advantage of. One of the programs that the legislature just recently passed is the Kansas Promise Act, in which that if, um, that if a student promises to stay in the state of Kansas and work for two years, um, we, will, we will pay for uh, community college, the books, tuition, and supplies, but they have, to re they have to stay in the state of Kansas. I think some of those, some of the programs like that will, uh, will keep our workforce here and make um, post-secondary education affordable. Thank you, John. Bill? I believe it's the state's job to ensure equitable access to post-secondary education. I'm very excited about the tax credit proposal to help Kansas businesses make student loan payments on behalf of their employees. This will help alleviate costs for students while giving businesses a way to attract new employees and to develop their current ones. Thank you both. Uh, moving on to question number six, and certainly the last two years have been somewhat unprecedented with, with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, as we move past the pandemic, it kind of provides an opportunity to look back and, for, and look at some perspective and kind of lessons that we've learned from the last two years. Um, Mel, I'll start with you on this particular question. Um, what do you believe the takeaways for state lawmakers should be from the COVID-19 pandemic experience? I think the big takeaways are that children or childcare and K through 12 are extremely important to a well-balanced economy. That families of Kansas are being left behind in our policies and they need help. Also that seniors are a vital part of our community and deserve to age with great with dignity. And that public health is not a partisan issue. That long term or that short term solutions are preferred over sweeping. I'm sorry, that small long term solutions are preferred over sweeping short term changes. Thank you. John. Thank you. Uh, for the second time in the history of Kansas, uh, we dealt with a nationwide pandemic. Um, we really weren't equipped to handle what was going to what was going to happen. Uh, we may have overreacted in some areas. We closed we closed schools. We uh, limited business. 
which caused some of them to fail. Uh, we closed churches. And the federal government flooded the state with, with all kinds of money, which we are still spending today, and we have the end of the year to do, to, to do that. Uh, we also learned uh, that the state wasn't equipped as far as the Department of Labor. Uh, their computer system failed tr uh, tremendously, and which also led to um, shining a spotlight on other computer systems within the state of Kansas which are lacking and need to be replaced. Um, as a result, it, it, it caused a lot of anxiety with, with people, and uh, hopefully that uh, should you have a reoccurrence of the pandemic, uh, we won't follow some of the things that we did in the past, and hopefully uh, we'll come out of it a lot in a lot better shape. So question number seven really wants down on the, on the uh, healthcare topic, and um, something that's a, a big issue in, in Kansas and elsewhere. Um, John, we'll start with you on this question. What are your views on healthcare policy and Medicaid expansion? I haven't supported Medicaid expansion and the number one, one reason is that many of the states that have passed it have um, underestimated the cost. Uh, sitting on a budget committee, um, I see just how tight our, our budget can be at times. You know, by statute, we're required to have 7.5% of our budget as a cushion or a reserve, and there are many years we haven't even come close to meeting that, uh, that responsibility, and we've had to waive um, the statute. Uh, we have many other things that we should, should be taking care of. Uh, there are state employees that haven't received pay raises in years. Uh, we can't hire in certain fields like Department of Corrections, Department of Transportation, KBI, the Highway Patrol, because we don't pay high enough to, to draw these people. We've also um, let our highways go. We've done minimal uh, repair on the highways. Um, and I think before we get into something that, um, that will be permanent and will cost the state who knows uh, the amount of money, I think we ought to take care of what we, uh, what we already have and, uh, and ensure that we can uh, meet our current obligations. Thank you, John. Bill? Expanding Medicaid in Kansas <clears throat> will do a lot of good for a lot of people. And I'm not just talking about the over 160,000 that would be eligible for coverage. <clears throat> Kansas has more rural hospitals that are at risk of closing than any other state except for Texas. When a hospital closes in a rural area, it's devastating for that community. With expansion, more money will be flowing into these hospitals, increasing their stability and service to the communities. Expanding CanCare will help increase and in maintain the health of our citizens, communities, and hospitals that serve them. And studies have also shown that it can drive down the cost of healthcare for privately insured individuals as well. And this will be 90% paid for by the federal government with the taxes that we already pay. Thank you. Thank you both. Moving on to our last question, question number eight. Um, there is certainly a, a unique relationship between um, uh, state government and local governments. Um, and and decision-making is oftentimes divided among state legislature and local governments, including school boards on issues such as taxation. Economic development and education um, have been matters of strong debate. Uh, what are your views on this issue? And Mel, we'll start with you. Thank you. No one understands the specific needs of a local area more than the local government and the school board. I see the role of legislature as one to provide resources and, and equity to the various local governments in the state. We should not be dictating the internal policies of government or school policies. If a city wants to ban plastic pack, plastic bags, that should be their right. If the county wants to consolidate their law enforcement so it works better for their community, they should have that right as well. I think the state legislature is wrong for stepping into these decisions and they're wrong for attempting to legislate school sports as well. We need to focus our efforts on making Kansas a great safe place to live, work, and raise a family. When I'm elected, I intend to focus on making life better for Kansans and not on changing the Constitution to give the legislature more power to control your daily life. 
Thank you, Bill. John? Kansas is, is wide and diverse, and um, local control plays an important part, especially in the rural areas. Um, I, where I sit on the floor, I, I meet with uh, people that represent rural areas all the time, and I hear about the difficulties they have and what they try to accomplish uh, through the local school boards and uh, through uh, city and county government. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, the legislature passed Senate Bill 40, which authorized county commissioners and uh, school boards to uh, to deal with the with the uh, issues related to the pandemic. Uh, with the legislature only meeting 90 days a year, it's difficult for us to to manage such such things. And um, I've always been a proponent of local government. Um, it's closest to the people. Um, locally, they should be able to determine what what happens in their community as far as uh, business, uh, even road construction or other property matters, um, the local issues should be handled by, by local authorities. Very good. Thank you both for answering those questions. Like, we're gonna move on to, to closing statements. And again, you each have two minutes to present closing statements. Uh, please sh be sure to highlight uh, what most distinguishes you from your opponent in the election coming up in November. Um, and John, we'll start with you. Thank you. Uh, our family has lived in Olathe for over 40 years, and I've been in public service for 30 years for the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. I bring knowledge and experience to the legislature that hasn't been available in the past. I deal with mostly public safety and correctional issues that affect the community. The number one responsibility for government is public safety. Many of the bills uh, that passed the legislature have some type of enforcement and I have constantly asked questions about how law enforcement or how even um, city ordinances would affect um, uh, the community. While I was with the with Sheriff's Office, I came uh, I developed several programs that you had mentioned. Um, the Sexual Predator Unit, the Crime Scene Unit, and the Computer Forensic Unit. And I continue to work on these issues in, at the state level. Um, but one of the things I've accomplished was that I expanded the time frame in which search warrants are saved, served. There has been several instances across the country where people have been seriously injured or killed. And giving more time for, for law enforcement to execute search warrants just makes it all around safety. Uh, my main focus has been public, uh, public safety. And uh, when I return to, Kansas, uh, to the legislature, uh, I will continue to work on those issues. I just want to say that experience means nothing if it's not relevant. My experience as a working mother raising a young family in the current economy and facing the same challenges as the people of District 121 are currently facing makes me better able to relate to them. Also, I'm active and responsive within the district, which has led to an overwhelming amount of support, and I'm proud to say that I've received most of my campaign funds from individual people and the majority within the district. They trust me not only to represent them, but they trust me to spend their money wisely. And I'm both honored and humbled to have their support. This has been a great conversation this morning, and I'm happy to continue this further. Uh, this has not been my first public appearance of this campaign, and it will not be the last either. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Mel for Kansas. And I look forward to seeing you there at my next event or at your front door. As your representative, I will be active and as active and as easy to get a hold of as I have been through this campaign. And I look forward to serving my neighbors in the community of House District 121. I will help them by reducing their taxes ensuring they have access to health care and the freedom to make their own health care decisions, as well as empowering our wonderful public schools by fully funding them, including special education. Most of all, I will put their needs and values above all else, and I will work to earn their trust each and every day. Thank you both for participating in today's um, program. Uh, this concludes our forum for House District 121. On behalf of the Olathe Chamber of Commerce, thank you for everyone for taking advantage of this important opportunity to learn about the candidates. 
For more information about the candidates, videos of these and other candidate forms and advanced voting details, please visit www.votejoco.com and please share this voter resource with colleagues, friends, and family. With that, thank you again for attending. We are adjourned. Thank you both.